the Trupa USA members, they requested for a Manjushi Vigi Wong. They were asking me what to do, what kind of things. So I said, whatever the community needs, whatever you all need. So I guess they must have requested Jambe Yangi Wong because uh, it is well known in the Himalayan region that, you know, for example, when you receive the Jambe Yangi Wong and the blessing of the Manjushri, who is known as the Buddha of Wisdom, some children, when they are born, they cannot speak very well. They take long time to their speech. But after receiving the Jambe Yangi Wong and the blessings, they, those who have not spoken for a long time, they start to speak. Their intelligence, you know, their intelligence and wisdom can, you know, can suffer, you know, increases and you know, the growth. And in the ancient India also, <clears throat> you may have heard of the, I think it's called the Asanga in Basubandha, Basubandhi, I think, in our Shrike, he is called the Great Master Thakme and Igin. <clears throat> In the, in the Indian time, whether during the, I think just a few hundred years after Buddha Shakyamuni, so there was a one Brahmin, Brahmin lady, uh, she thought that uh, Buddha Dhamma is uh, declining in India at that time, and she really prayed to have a two, have a two you know, sons who will flourish the Buddha Dhamma in the land of India, revive the Buddha Dhamma's teaching. So when the when the babies, the children, her children were very young, she used to always pray to the Manjushri. And there's a Manjushri's main letter on the word syllable, like green tara is tam. Manjushri is the letter A. So she when the baby was small, she used to write the letter A on the, the tongue of the baby with a sandalwood and then recite the Manjushri prayer so many times. And because of that, you know, one of her son, known as I, I think it's Basubandi, if I'm Sanskrit, I don't remember very well, but in our tricky Lopin Yingin, and he grew up to be one of the most learned and most intelligent, our the Bumde Kuchukorgo. For example, when you read the Kanju, there's a 100 volume of the, I think 99 volume of the Kanju. So he was able to memorize everything. And every day he used to recite the Kanju from his memorization and there's a, even a story that one day when he was reciting the uh, he, he does a daily prayer and there used to be one pigeon you know always near him and then one day when the pigeon passed away he was born in a different part of india and he always said where is my teacher i'm looking for my teacher who is my teacher okay, my teacher is the union then they didn't know who he was then later from the traveling merchants they found out that actually it's uh, Lupin Yingin is the one in the central part of India. And then, the, you know, that because every day he used to hear, hear the Lupin Yingin reciting the whole 99 volumes of the Kanjur, you know, he was uh, blessed and that's why he could take rebirth in human form. So in the Himalayan region in India, you know, the Manjushri is uh, very well known for, in terms of, uh, you know, the short, quick, we just want to, even when we were young also, when we have to study hard, the teacher will give us a deadline, you know, so we used to pray to Jambayam and then memorize and, you know, I think it's a blessing also. We used to be able to memorize very quickly, especially when the teacher says, you know, if one, by tonight you don't give us the, you know, the memorize, then you will give, you will get the stick, you know. Then we used to really pray to Majushri and then, you know, that, um, so anyway, <coughs> the, Manjushri is known as, uh, in, in, in a very kind of uh, simple external blessing, Manjushri is uh, basically the, all the Buddhas, they have three quality, compassion, uh, power, com without compassion you cannot benefit sentient being, without uh, power you are helpless, uh, so that is why compassion is Cherezi, represented by Cherezi, power is represented by Chandadoji, and then the wisdom is represented by the Manjushri. So Buddha always has the three qualities called Kemba, Sewa, and Yuba. Kemba means wisdom. If you don't know, for example, if you don't have a medical knowledge, you can't really help other people, even if you want to help them from a medical point of view. Even if you have the wisdom, but you don't have a compassion, then you will really help other people. Even if you have the compassion and the wisdom and the knowledge, 
but if you don't have authority, the power to do so, you can't help any sentient being. So we say that Buddha, to those who are aspiring to become a Buddha, must always have three qualities, and these are represented by the Manjushri Jambaya, Jambaya, and then the Chirizi or Avalokiteshwara, Vajrapani or Chanadoji. So externally, Manjushri is known as one who grows your intelligent. Later, when you were giving one, also the one's history, also there's a some kind of the history related to that which will come later. So externally Manjushri, by praying to Manjushri, those who are not able to speak well, stuttering, when they recite Om Arapata Nadidi, the Manjushri mantra, or Om Vagishwarumam, or Gangilotu, when they do repeat many times, their speech becomes clear, they are able to memorize a lot, their intelligence grow. So these are the external blessings of the Manjushri. Then the internal blessing of the Manjushri is known as the Shirak or the Wisdom. And the Wisdom is to able to understand that, you know, for example, able to understand the law of the cause and condition. So when you understand the law of cause and condition, you understand that everything happens due to various factors. For example, there is, a, you know, like for example, there is a, it has been raining a few days, for the past few days in the in New York, there was some rainbow also one or two days ago. So when you when you understand the law of cause and condition, you understand that for rain to happen also, there is a formation of clouds, the water, wind, you know, all these conditions come together, then the rain falls. If you know without some of these conditions missing, they won't be possible. So you understand that similarly a rainfall and the rainbow needs various cause and condition or circumstances. Whatever we are experiencing in our life also due to cause and condition, or in other word called karma. And because it arises due to cause and condition, it has no inherent reality. That's why we talk about emptiness. So if you separate the rain from the moisture, the air, and all of that, there is no such entity, inherent entity called rain. So you understand that, in one way, you understand the karma. But in another way, at the same time, you also understand that because everything arises due to cause and condition, nothing has a, you know, nothing has a fixed identity. That is why in our life, you know, we think that we have fixed everything. Now I am, you know, now everything in my life is set. I have got this. I have got the house. I have got the job. I have got everything. But then you know that. But you think now my life is set. But we don't realize that the life that we have set right now, perfect, is due to all the cause and conditions. When the current situation changes, our perfect life also begins to change, right? You fix everything, but after some time, no? because whatever we have fixed due to, are uh, due to cause and condition, circumstances. And anything that arises due to cause and condition will never stay permanent. That's why we say Dujyatam Jimitapa, or any compounded phenomena is impermanent. No? That's why when you look at the great leaders also, the country also, you know, every, you know, for example, in the United States also, how many great presidents have come from Thomas Jefferson to now? They fixed, you know, they thought, oh, now I've made my country great. But then after some time, you know, the next president will come and say, this, this, they didn't do it wrong. I will make America great again, you know? <laughs> and maybe they will do it. But then whatever great they have made is also due to cause condition. And anything that arises due to cause and condition is impermanent, like a weather. It's raining now due to cause and condition. And when these cause and conditions are impermanent, they will not stay there forever. Then the weather will change. That's why you know, there is no way that nothing in this world, be it our own life, be it the country situation, be it the relationship that's a permanent, stable, unchanging, there will, there will never be a such time like that. that is a, that is the nature of impermanent, Dvijetam Jamidapa, right? So to understanding of that, you know, these are called the wisdom. You know? Because these are called wisdom, that is why I think uh, you know, if we don't understand these things, then we are kind of uh, always, you know, kind of expecting something which is not possible, you know, something that is unchanging in our all aspects of our life, be it physical, emotional, you know, career-wise, unchanging, you know, stable, when that all the, the world itself, life itself, arises due to cause condition, that's why it's subject to change all the time. 
So understanding the nature of the phenomena, the nature of the life is called the wisdom. And that the deep wisdom also arises, that deep wisdom itself is known as Manjushri. And that wisdom arises also due to the Manjushri's blessing. So that is why we, <coughs> the, I think the Manjushri initiation was re requested. And I didn't mind giving because I remember many few times, in, I think in the Himalayan region, especially in Bhutan, there was a few parents who were worried about the kids. They were like five or six years old, but still not speaking. So then there is a um, special, you know, the Lubin Jambeshini, one of the great practitioners of the Manjushri. He practiced the Manjushri and then he saw the Manjushri and then the pills made from that is called Jamyam Jibu. You know? It's a rib which is blessed from the Manjushri. On top of that, each of the pill also there's a letter R written there. So that I remember, I had a few of those. So we, I used to give one to the children who, who are stuttering, who cannot be able to speak. So then later I noticed that uh, those they, after they grew up, you know, they spoke late, but later they are able to speak at least 90% like a normal children. So that's why whenever the parents come with a worry about their children unable to speak, I always recommend them, please have an image of a Manjushri. It doesn't matter, you know, if you are rich, you can have a gold. If you, if you don't have, you know, just a print from the internet, you know, it's in the Google is there. You know, and then you do the prayer. And then, so anyway, so, you know, because, you know, everybody at immediately doesn't need wisdom, you know, we need immediate solution of the problem. And then, of course, long term, the, you know, the, in the, the greater wisdom. So anyway, that is the why today we are giving the Manjushri one. I think there is a reason why they request it. And I also thought, why not? And uh, since everybody in the Himalayan region, we all know Kangi Lodu, we are praying to Manjushri, the Buddha of the wisdom. And wisdom is needed in all aspects of life. In not only in the you know the spiritual life, but every aspect of life. For example, in one of the teachings of the you know the masters, they say that you know, for example, even if you love your children very much, and if out of your love for your children, but if there is a love in your your but there is no wisdom in how you bring up your children, then they will become spoiled. And as a consequence of them, you know, kind of a getting spoiled, they'll have a very difficult time adjusting to the society in the later part of their life. So then, you know, our love is in a way weaken them, in a way kind of a disable them to life because we, you know, we kind of, a, uh, you know, we made them someone who cannot adjust in the society. So anyway, <clears throat> the, so the, Wisdom has a different application at different times, so that today Manjushri was like that. And then when I, we were just thinking only doing the Manjushri Giwang, then few, I think uh, almost a month ago, I saw a kasho from one of my guru, His Holiness the Chekhembo of Bhutan. And in, in his kasho, he, he wrote that I think there is some sort of a prediction, uh, you know. And then in, in, in his advice, he said that, uh, this is the year of the dragon, and in this year of the dragon, if I think I feel that there are certain you know actions or certain circumstances that that is going to happen, and if these things cannot be changed, then on the year of the ship, there is a large possibility of the world war, you know, World War Three. So, <clears throat> so. Chabja, uh, his only assistant, Chekhem, advised that in this year of the dragon is the year that we can change the karma you know, of the, what is going to happen in the year of the ship. So in Bhutan, and to all his students, he recommended reciting the Benza Guru. So then I thought that since we are all, you know, in the Drupal USA, when we are we, we are all gathered here, you know, why don't we also, we all have a devotion to Guru Padma Sambhava. Guru Padma Sambhava will look after all the people Himalayan region from Tibet to Bhutan to Sikkim, Nepal, you know, there's no one who doesn't, who has not been blessed by Guru Padma Sambhava and protected by his blessing, especially Bhutan. Many of the great Sai Lama, they say that in Bhutan, you know, all the, you know, whenever Bhutan is going through difficulty, it's the Guru Bhutche who has always saved and protected. And Bhutanese people also have unwavering devotion. They have never broken their with the Guru Padma Sambhava. 
even Shabda Rinpoche and all Namke is said to be Guru Rinpoche's manifestation. So that's why I thought, you know, why don't we, when His Holiness the Che Kembo, you know, he's giving us the guidance to prevent the difficulties for the world. And since we are also part of the world, our karma also to some extent affects what's happening in the world, right? It's called collective karma. So that is the reason why I requested that in the morning, uh, let's do uh, Guru Rinpoche Zoko. And those of you who have the book can join it. Those of you who do not have it, you know, can recite the Guru Padma Sambhava Mantra. And in the past, there are many, many legend, many kind of uh, you know, prediction Guru Rinpoche gave. For example, for the Tibet also in the Kathang Dupi, and many things Guru Rinpoche gave, many advices. He even predicted that uh, what time, the, you know, the, when the cultural revolution will happen, the war will happen. Everything was predicted in Guru Rinpoche, and Guru Rinpoche gave many guidance also, which I think unfortunately, you know, some could follow, some couldn't follow. So they also similarly the predictions for Sikkim, prediction for you know the Lungden have been given. At least I think in Bhutan, the, very lucky that see Bhutan is a country that is blessed by a Dharma King, successive great masters like Son and Chiran Bhutan. So they are there to guide us, you know, for before the diff difficulty happens. So that's where Chiran Bhutan gave us the advice. And then in Bhutan also, many monasteries, including my monastery, they are organizing seven days of uh, reciting Guru Bache, so Benza Guru and the thing. And then here also today morning, we'll offer a talk to Guru Bache and do the Benza Guru. So with that uh, sort of uh, explanation or intention, right, we will continue the Benza Guru. Thank mm -hmm. you. 